What's this mean for all of us today? Well, no matter where you might find yourself on your own particular spiritual journey, let's say um, that this information for you can be completely transformational. Here's, here's what I mean. Most people, no matter what they believe, um, tend to like Jesus or like the idea of Jesus. They may not like the church. They may not agree with all that's attributed to Jesus as saying. But for the most part, most people like the idea of Jesus. And if somehow it becomes possible to have the same name and authority that Jesus had, that's something that can have cosmic implications for all of us. And that's exactly what Jesus seems to be praying about here. In verse 13, we learn that because of this name transfer, it becomes possible for us, it includes all of us here today, to experience the complete joy of Jesus. It's a joy that comes from being restored to the people that we were created to be. And this happens as we become sanctified in the truth of all Jesus has accomplished for us through his life, death, and resurrection. That's how he concludes this prayer in verse 19. What this means is when we take on his name, our sins become forgiven. Our brokenness becomes healed. And no matter what we've done wrong in our lives, we are made into a new creation. Remember what I said earlier, God is a saving God, a redeeming God. He always has been. He loves to make us into the people that we were created to be. He loves to give our lives purpose and meaning. And that happens through this strange process of taking on a name. In the song, A Boy Named Sue, you can see the negativity that a name can bring. The name Sue brings hardness of heart. I grew up quick and I grew up mean. My fist got hard and my wits got keen. The name brings uh, constant fights and conflict. Some guys laugh and I bust his head. It carries embarrassment and shame. It got lots of laughs from lots of folk. And inevitably, it cultivates this desire to kill the guy who gave him this name. I made a vow to the moon and stars that I'd search the honky-tonks and bars and kill that man who gave me that awful name. That was my mic impression. Through it all, we see that Sue, because of his name, didn't have any kind of relationship with his father. If you compare that to what happens when someone takes on the name Jesus gives them, it's quite different. Instead of hardness of heart, we grow soft-hearted. We become sensitive to our own sin and our brokenness, and we recognize that we need God to bring healing into our lives. Instead of a life that's filled with fights and conflict, we're called by the great peacemaker and the great reconciler to be peacemakers who share in a ministry of reconciliation. We become people who help others find Jesus and see how he can make them right in their relationship with God. Instead of embarrassment and shame, we're filled with the fullness of joy. And perhaps most importantly, instead of wanting to kill the guy that gave us our new name, we're so filled with joy and thankfulness, we want to worship and serve him. We want to be the people that Jesus created us to be. If we truly understand what it means to have his name, we can't help but be changed inside. Our lives now have new purpose and meaning. I'll give you an example here from the world of Superman. Talking about the, uh, the first Superman movie with Christopher Reeve in it. In this movie, you get to know Clark Kent as an honorable, respectable young kid, but he never gets to be the person that he knows he could be. Something major is missing in his life. He knows he has all this great power, he has great strength, but he doesn't know why he has it. And he lives with his adopted parents, but even his parents have no clue why it is that he has this power. And that creates a certain kind of angst and longing inside of Clark Kent's life. There's an emptiness. Deep down, he knows he's not being the person that he was created to be. Many of us here today can probably relate to that sense of feeling. It's a common cry in humanity's heart. Deep down, we all know we're not being the people that we were created to be. Well, then one day, Clark stumbles upon what would eventually become his fortress of solitude, a place where all of his questions can be answered by a holographic imprint of his real father. And the first thing that he wants to know when he sees his father is, who am I? 
what is my name? And then he learns that he's Cal El. He's the son of Jarrell from the planet Krypton. Yes? He's also the Hulk. He's also the Hulk? Is he? He's not, but you know, that does raise a good question. Who would win in a battle between Superman and the Incredible Hulk? I have, I, I, well, you can cross the universes sometimes. I've never really thought about that. Can, can the I? Spiky Hulk? The Spiky Hulk? The one that's bad. Oh, the bad Hulk. Well, in that battle, Superman would probably win. I'll think about that. I'll give you an answer later. Hecklers. Love them. <laughs> so Superman learns that his real name is Kal-El. He's the son of Jor-El from the planet Krypton. And Jor-El tells his son that he's been sent to the Earth, which is full of very complex people who are capable of so much good, the people of planet Earth, but they constantly do evil instead. And then... Jarrell tells Kal-El something that will completely change his life and give him added meaning and purpose. This is what he says. They are a good people, speaking of humanity. They only lack a light to guide them. Kal-El hears this, and then he decides that he's going to become Superman in order that he can be that light for humanity. It's... <sighs> It's a power, powerful, powerful parallel to the story of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. But it also powerfully shows us the positive impact that a name can have. When Kal-El finally realizes the name he has been given and the power and the authority that goes along with that, his life has new purpose and it changes completely. And the changes in his life end up changing the entire world. And that, my friends is what can happen to all of us here today as we embrace this new name that Jesus has for us. So wherever you might be on your own spiritual journey, this message is for you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you currently believe, no matter your economic or your social standing, no matter your voting preference or your current core identity, whether you are named John or Sue, Jesus has a name for you. Jesus has a name for you. And he wants you to learn about that name. He's given us the words whereby we can do so. He's given us the words whereby we can learn about the name that he has for us. He tells us about this in verse 13 today. We learn about that name in the person of Jesus. We learn it by studying his life, death, and resurrection. We learn it by singing songs like Jesus Messiah. We learn it through other songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. We participate in that great name, or in that great name every time that we gather together as a community and celebrate the Lord's table together. In the bread and wine here, we unite with the name of Jesus. And at the same time, interestingly, we unite with one another as well. It fulfills part of Jesus' prayer in verse 11. He asks this, he says, Holy Father, keep them, he's praying about all of us here, Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. We all stand here today, a peculiar people. All kinds of backgrounds and belief. Some of us here probably like Star Wars. Some of us here probably like Star Trek. We're very different. We're very diverse. And yet, here we are together in unity, preparing to come together to this table. What a model that can be reproduced in the rest of the world, my friends. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing really good inside of any of us by ourselves, but because of the goodness of Jesus Christ, who's given us His name, we can go out into the world and model that we can dwell together in unity. It's amazing. We live in such a polarized world and a polarized culture right now where people with varying beliefs can't sit together at the same table and get along. We have a great opportunity as a community to be able to show them a different way a way inspired by the name of Jesus, a way empowered by the name of Jesus. And that, my friends, is good news for me, for you, and for a boy named Sue. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, please take these words and our time together and use them to change and transform all of us. Draw us closer to each other and closest to you, or closer to you by the power of your name. And help us out of gratitude for all you've done for us to live our lives in a way that would honor you and bring you glory. This we pray in the name of Jesus, to the praise and glory of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
All right, we'll see if we have any questions here.